Hey guys, welcome to Telling the Told and Untold. My name is Tsuhu. Before we go straight into today's case, I do have to give you guys a couple of content warnings. This video does involve themes of domestic abuse, child abuse, sexual assault, bestiality, necrophilia, as well as cannibalism. I don't go into too much detail about most of the content warnings I just gave you, but if that's not something that you're interested in watching, then this video probably isn't for you. So you can watch some of my other videos that I'll link up here, or you can just wait for my next upload. Stuart Wilkin was born on the 11th of November, 1966 in Box. When he was just six months old, his mother abandoned both him as well as his older sister who was a toddler at the time. The two were found by a domestic helper who then took the two children to her employer who I'll be referring to as John in this video. And according to Stuart, John was extremely abusive and he just really wasn't the nicest person in the world. On one occasion, he would smoke cigarettes and like burn them on Stuart's genitals and sometimes when he would give Stuart food he would take the plate away and put it on the floor to give it to the dogs so that they could eat the food and this would force Stuart to also eat the same food that the dogs were eating on the floor. Stuart says on one occasion um, John was having intercourse with the dogs and he made Stuart watch him and once he was done he made Stuart um, lick his genitals. When Stuart was two years old, he was adopted by the Wilkin family and they were John's neighbors. Apparently they would see Stuart all the time and they just felt really sorry for him because he had lice in his hair, he was malnourished and they just wanted to give him a better life. Um, sometime as this was happening, Stuart's older sister kind of just like disappeared and no one really knows where she went so she kind of just like fades out of the story. So Stuart was taken in by the Wilkin family and because they wanted to adopt him they needed his mother's permission. So Stuart remembers when he was there this woman came in, gave him like a sweet um, and then spoke to the Wilkin family and after this she left and this was the first and last time Stuart saw his mother but obviously at the time he didn't know that it was his mother. Stuart's adopted mother says that growing up Stuart was a problem child and he really didn't do that well in school. He failed grade one and he failed grade three three times. After this they decided to move him to special ed classes and Stuart says whilst he was in like these classes the teacher would uh, make the kids pick on him and bully him so he was constantly bullied and they would make fun of the fact that he was adopted and before this he had no idea that he had been adopted. Also Stuart didn't like this teacher that much and on one occasion like he tried fighting her and then she sent one of the other kids to like fight back and Stuart got in trouble for this and the next day one of the school administrators whipped him in front of the entire school um, as punishment. When Stuart was just 8 years old, he started smoking marijuana and when he was 9, he claims that he was sexually assaulted by one of the deacons from the local church. Stuart also went to an industrial school after his mother reported him to child welfare and if I'm not mistaken, um, an industrial school is basically like a school for misbehaving children or like children that misbehave so he was taken there and he also claims that he was sexually assaulted by the older boys when he was in grade 11 Stuart decided to leave school and after this he went to go join the army but after four months he just wasn't having a good time so he tried to unalive himself and then he moved back home with his mother who was living in Port Elizabeth at this time so once he got to Port Elizabeth to live with his mother, he went to a carpentry school but unfortunately not too long after he started, he hurt one of his hands and after this he started living off of a disability grant by the government. 
One night when Stuart was at a nightclub, he met a woman and her name was Lynn and the two immediately hit it off. Lynn had a daughter from a previous relationship and then in 1985 on Christmas morning, Lynn gave birth to the pair's first daughter together, well only daughter and her name was Wu An. And Lynn says after she gave birth to Wu An, Stuart completely changed and he didn't want to have vaginal intercourse with her anymore. He preferred her backside instead. Yes, he preferred to have it anally. Yes. And sometimes when Lynn would go out without Stuart or the children, once she got back home, Stuart would always look at her underwear just to make sure that she wasn't out doing anything because he thought that she was a sex worker. But from what I could tell, um, there's no indication that she was ever a sex worker. It's just that Stuart had like his own like insecurities or beliefs that we'll get into later into the video. Yes, so when Wuan was five years old, the two finally decided to get married and they were married for nine years. And by all accounts, this marriage was terrible. It was just a terrible marriage. Um, Lynn would constantly call the police on Stuart for smoking marijuana and then he would be arrested and once he was released, he would get home and then he would physically assault Lynn all the time. There was one occasion where he was hospitalized. I'm not too sure if it was in a psychiatric institution or just like a normal hospital, but whilst he was in a hospital, he was diagnosed as a psychopath. Like... Imagine being diagnosed as a psychopath. So he was released and he went home and Lynn called the police on him again. And then he saw the police arrive and as soon as he saw them like walking into the house, he took a bunch of pills to try and unalive himself. Sorry. Um, to try and unalive himself again. And luckily they caught him time and then he was hospitalized again. And once he, and once he was released, Lynn did file for divorce and the pair separated. After this, Stuart went to go live in a field. So he basically didn't have a house. He was just living like in the field across an amusement park that he would always go to when he was a child. So it brought him like happy memories. So that's why he wanted to live um there and then um after a while he met another woman her name was victoria and just like him and lynn the pair hit it off and victoria had two sons from a previous relationship and then the pair had their own two children but victoria's parents did not like Stuart. they didn't trust him and they thought that he was sodomizing victoria's two sons and because of this they went to the police station and there they arrested Stuart for sodomy um and after a couple of weeks i think on the 23rd of january 1997 um, the case was dropped and there's no reason as to why this case was dropped but the case they literally just dropped the case but at this time Stuart and Victoria had ended their relationship and he had moved out a week later a sergeant of the Port Elizabeth robbery and murder unit received a phone call from the child protection unit about a child who had been missing from the 22nd of January 1997 and his name was Henry Bakers and the reason why they were calling the sergeant is because Henry was last seen with a man and his name was Stuart Wilkin and they also found out that another person another child had last been seen with Stuart before she went missing two years earlier and her name was Wu Ann Wilkin. So after gathering all this information the sergeant called Stuart in and once Stuart got to the police station he introduced himself as Buti Bur. Um, this was just a nickname that he had been given. I don't know if he gave it to himself or he had been given by the community but that's how most community members knew him by and even if you go search Stuart Wilkin now um, Buti Bur is also like what he's 
known as. Once Stuart sits down, the sergeant just shows him like all of his certificates and his accomplishments um, from being a detective and just trying to show Stuart that he was really good at his job and he would constantly catch serial killers and things like that. You know, just trying to like show Stuart like this is who I am and I'm really good at my job. So after showing Stuart all these things, the sergeant decides to leave his office and he leaves Stuart in there for a couple of minutes and once he returns, he just sits down, looks at Stuart and says, I know you killed Henry and when. And after this, Stuart kept quiet for like a moment and then he looked at him and he said yes i did kill them both and matter of fact i had intercourse with henry's decomposing body this morning just before i came here Stuart says that he kept his daughter's body in the field that he was staying in um close to the amusement park and he would sleep with her body almost every night until it started decomposing and then he covered it in a top and and then he would just lay out her clothes like when he went to bed and he says the reason why he killed his daughter is because she went up to him and told him that she had been sexually assaulted by her stepfather and because he didn't want to end growing up the same way he did by being like sexually assaulted by multiple people and kind of just living with that he just thought the best way to get rid of all that pain and trauma um, was by killing her. He then told the sergeant where he could find Henry's body as well and because the sergeant had dealt with so many cases he just had like this pressing feeling so he just thought about it and he looked at Stuart and he asked him how many people have you killed and Stuart just said I think 10. After this, Stuart called his lawyer and his lawyer came in and after this, Stuart gave a full confession about all of the murders he had committed. On the 3rd of September 1999, Stuart was still married to Lynn at this time and he says that that night they got into an argument and he decided to leave the house just to like cool down and be away from her and this is where he met a sex worker and her name was Virginia and he says Virginia offered um, her services to him and then he opened his wallet to show her that he could afford her services and after this they went to to a nearby school and once they got to the school they had intercourse and after this um, Stuart wanted to have anal sex but she didn't want to so he forced himself onto her after this he took a piece of her clothing and started strangling her and whilst he was strangling her he climaxed after this he left her body there and just left Stuart was only 23 years old when he committed his first murder. On the 10th of January 1991, Stuart met another sex worker and her name was Marsha and she too offered her services to him. They then went to a nearby park and this is where she demanded that he pay her first before they do anything and Stuart got extremely angry because he believed that one shouldn't have to pay for sex and it was like his God-given right to have free sex with people and because he got so angry he took a piece of her clothing strangled her and once she was deceased he had intercourse with her corpse then on the 21st of october Stuart met a 14 year old boy who was homeless and living on the streets he says he went up to the boy and proposed that they have sex and he says that the boy did consent to this but i should note that this is a 14 year old boy he literally can't consent he can't consent after this he took the boy to a park and he says once they got there the boy demanded that um, Stuart pay him first before they do anything and as we know Stuart does not like paying for sex and because of this he got extremely angry he then took a piece of clothing and started strangling this 14 year old boy and whilst he was strangling him he climaxed and after this he sodomized the boy and then left his body there 
sometime between June and September 1993, Stuart met another homeless boy and he went up to this boy and he offered to pay this boy if he were to masturbate him and the boy said yes. So they went to a museum and once they got to the museum, the boy masturbated Stuart and after this, he sodomized the boy to which the boy got really upset about and said that he was going to go to the police station to report Stuart and after this Stuart took off his belt and then strangled this boy and then hid his body. On the 27th of July 1995 Stuart met another sex worker and her name was Georgina. She was working around a primary school. After this they went to a park and this is where Stuart sodomized her. After this, he took a piece of her clothing and then strangled her until she passed away. After this, he had a knife on him, so he inserted the knife into her vagina and cut it open. He then took the knife and sliced off her nipples and proceeded to eat them. He then undressed her fully and threw her clothes into a fish pond. Stuart would later admit that he would often go back to the scene of the crime um, and watch police officers as they investigated and tried to find some evidence and he noticed that they would look for pieces of hair. So because of this, he decided to take um, Georgina's clothes off and throw them into the pond so that the police officers wouldn't find any hair strands. On the 29th of September 1995, Stuart went to go visit his daughter Wu Anne, and he says that whilst he was visiting her, she told him that her stepfather had sexually assaulted him. After this, he took Wu An to the field that he lived at, um, close to the amusement park, and this is where he strangled her. Um, so the sergeant asked him if he did sexually assault Wu An, and the only thing Stuart said is that he looked inside her vagina and saw that she was not a virgin anymore. But it is believed that he did have intercourse with her corpse, um, and they believe this because he would often go back to the bodies of the boys that he had killed and have intercourse with them. So he says that he would put newspaper um, inside the bodies just to make sure that he wouldn't get any maggots on him whilst he was having sex with their dead bodies. The following year, on the 25th of March, he met another sex worker and her name was Katrina and he then strangled her with a piece of her clothing and whilst he was strangling her, he did climax. Afterwards, he took a piece of plastic and stuffed it down her throat. Sometime between May and August of that year, he did meet another homeless boy. He then sodomized this boy in a schoolyard, strangled him, and while strangling him, climaxed, and then left the body in the schoolyard. On the 22nd of January 1997, this is when Stuart met 12-year-old Henry Baker. Stuart did know Henry's mother. Um, they weren't friends or anything like that. They were just acquaintances. So he says that he saw Henry and then Henry went up to him and told him that um, he wanted Stuart to teach him about sex, which is completely unbelievable. But yes. Then after this, he took Henry to the field that he lived in that was close to the amusement park and he told Henry to undress. After Henry undressed, um, he masturbated him and then forced him to have oral sex. After this, he sodomized Henry and he says while he was sodomizing him, Henry started screaming and because of this, he took a piece of clothing and started strangling him and obviously as he was strangling him he climaxed. The reason why Stuart would take some of his victims to schools is because he says that it reminded him of when he was younger and he was sodomized and sexually assaulted by some people from the school as well as when he was sexually assaulted by one of the deacons of the church. And the reason why he would go after sex workers is because he believed that 
sex workers were a whores because um, sex was freely given to both men and women by God and no one deserves to pay for that and they were just stealing from people so they deserved what was coming for them and the reason why he enjoyed strangling some of his victims and climaxing at the same time um, is because I don't know he just enjoyed it he called it the jelly bean effect so he says that as he was strangling them and they were struggling for air and their tongue would poke out um, that would arouse him so that's why he would often strangle his victims and climax while doing that Stuart Wilkin was charged with 10 counts of murder and 5 counts of sodomy and then on February 23rd 1998 Stuart Wilkin was found guilty and sentenced to seven terms of life imprisonment and he's currently serving his seven life sentences at the St. Albans prison in Port Elizabeth. In a twist of faith, Lynn Stewart's first wife was bludgeoned to death in 2005. According to her third husband, she and one of her children were on their way to a phone booth so that they could call him and this is when a car pulled up with three men inside. Fortunately, the child managed to escape but they had taken Lynn and she was found in a field the next day. And that's it for today's case. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. I'm so interested to hear what you guys think. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.